Wonderful. Hello, welcome to the Donahue Group. I'm glad you could join us for a fast-paced half hour of conversation. We haven't been on the air for a while, and so we have all sorts of things to talk about. My fellow panelists, Cal Potter, former state senator, Tom Paneski, all in red, channeling Lee Sherman Dreyfus, no doubt. Uh, Tom, a professor yep. of mathematics Christmas look. at UW Sheboygan. Ken Risto, now truly a humble social studies teacher. I'm Mary Lynn Donahue. I'm a partner with Hop Newman Humkey, which has recently relocated its office and on uh, on Kohler Memorial Drive. And you can give the address if you want. 2124 <laughs> Kohler <laughs> Memorial Drive, an unnamed three-story red brick mm. building, but uh, moves are always interesting. Yeah. And uh, the old Imperial Motel. The old Imperial Motel, <laughs> exactly. That's just where we are. Um, it, we have not been on the air for a while. Uh, in the meantime, there have been all sorts of interesting things. Let's start out, I think probably with, to me, one of the more interesting stories is our mayoral race, which is heating up, and uh, uh, we now have four Nothing candidates. Else is. <laughs> yeah. Right, I mean, we are filming on about the coldest day in the world. Um, uh, Mayor Juan Perez, of course, is back in the race. Terry Van Akron, a little bit of a surprise since Terry had kind of sort of let people know that he kind of sort of wasn't running. Um, Bob Ryan it was quite a surprise to me, and then a fellow by the name of Martin Bowman, I think, um, uh, who uh, not as well known as the rest of the group. So uh, there will be a primary on uh, Tuesday, February 17th, and then the general election on April 4th. Uh, what are you thinking? Um, first of all, who do you think gets through the primary, and what do you think the issues are going to be? I think Van Akron and Perez will be the yeah. two contenders. I think you have two two incumbents, really. Mm. Um, <laughs> the, the problem that say. Perez has is he has the incumbency of being the mayor, whereas uh, Van Akron has the incumbency of uh, not having any baggage on the municipal level, having been in the legislature for a number of years. Mm -hmm. so gonna, I think they're going to be uh, uh, two well-known candidates, which is not always the case in a mayoral, mayoral situation where there's a challenger. Right. Last, in fact, the last election in 2005, there were, I had, I had, not, I had forgotten there were six people in the primary, and uh, this time there are only four. Tom? Yeah, I think the same thing, and, and uh, Terry just uh, ran for assembly, so people have gotten accustomed to voting for him. He's been in, the, his name has been out there, so they know who he is. Uh, and they haven't had an opportunity to vote for uh, Mayor Perez uh, for four years, so we'll get a chance to know what the, uh, they think of uh, how he's been performing. Or we have hearsay and a few letters to the editor. But you're right, the two well-known people, and uh, that's who I think will wind up being in the general election. Yep. Ken, any I'm dissenting sleeping. view? Yeah, I'm sleeping. Well, yeah. I think it's going to be Perez and Van Akron. It's going to be a February primary. So if the weather is like today, or we have a snowstorm, there might be a surprise out there. But I don't think most people even know Mr. Bowman. No. Um, I'm not sure he's going to have the opportunity the time to get his name out. Mm. Um, I don't think Alderman Ryan, after the little soap opera that he went through a couple months back, really impressed a lot of folks. Um, and like I said, Cal's right. You're right. There's two names that people have voted for. They know who they are. They're pretty much known entities. The issues, I, I guess, you know, Juan's going to Juan's going to basically should run on in, on his rec on his record. You know, the mayor can look and say, I've did this, 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 and this. Um, are you happy with the way the city's being run? Uh, do you want four more years? I'm not sure what uh, you know Representative Van Acker is going to bring to the table. Um, has I don't believe he has any executive experience. So, as a lawmaker, he's going to have nice connections with Madison and certainly a relationship with the governor. That might be his strength. He could put on the table to the city of Sheboygan mm -hmm. voters, but it'll be, interesting. It'll be interesting. The problem with being in Doyle's camp, uh, and, he, and Terry Van Akron has solidly been, which is, you know, sensible, um, is that he's been in the position of having to vote against <coughs> municipalities on a repeated basis since Doyle's been in office because Doyle's... Um, the governor's focus is on education, and it's been really a trade-off, as far as I can tell, between education and municipalities. And so, it'll be an, an interesting shift, uh, uh, an interesting shift for uh, for Terry Van Akron. Um, do you have a sense? 
uh, you know, one of the things about the Donahue group, of course, is that we're always cordial, <laughs> almost always cordial, and. Um, uh, well, you are a little mean to me sometimes. Well, and well deserved, of course. But okay. um, <laughs> I'm just wondering if it's. <laughs> well, you would agree. Um, I'm but just you're wondering mean to if me? it's going to be a contentious, unpleasant race. Um, I don't know. I, I, I read the press release of the of uh, Terry Van Akron's kickoff, and it seemed a little negative. Uh, and campaigns are, of course, mm -hmm. about that. But am I off base there, or do you think it's good? Well, I think they're going to find whatever they can because that's uh, the nature of too many poli politics in Wisconsin and the nation sure. nowadays. Um, a letter to the editor the other day about uh, Van Akron staying in the assembly possibly for a period of time. The inflection of the letter was sort of he's going to hold two jobs permanently, but he's already said that he's only going to do it till the budget passes, which in a way is, is a wise decision in the sense that you want to be there when the vote comes for aids for Sheboygan School District or aids for cities or road aids or whatever. Um, it'd be nice to be in a position where you can say, I'm getting the best buck I can for the city and county mm -hmm. and so on of Sheboygan rather than leaving the seat open and, mm -hmm. and, and just resigning because there's not going to be a filling of that seat if he were to be victorious probably until the time the budget's passed. I, I mean, and there's you, a special election, isn't there? Yes. This if, is not if, an appointment by the, uh, no, by the no, governor. No. So, and and I, it's a special if there's no... Uh, um, if there's no regularly scheduled election, so there's none in fall, so you can't wait for that period of time. So you have to have a special. Right. Will, it, will it be piggybacked on to the April mayoral election? No, it, it couldn't no. be because he won't know. Well, you could, you could put. So you'll have to have a special, special. Yeah, election. you couldn't because they don't assume office till not mid April. Right. Of uh, the last Monday in April. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, no, that's yeah. school district. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah no, I think uh, it is mid-April. You're yeah. correct. But okay. you could put it. You could piggyback a primary on that if it were the right timing for sure. when mm -hmm. the office was being begun. Okay. You were going to say something. To well, me, yeah. I mean, I could think of some issues. You know, okay, recall people. Now is your opportunity to recall. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the recall was. Really unsuccessful. I it mean, was those, but those yeah, folks had a lot no of people luck. said uh, we we don't want to go through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll wait till the next turnaround. Sure. So that could be an issue. Uh, what does Terry? Uh, he votes one way and then uh, sustains the governor's veto by switching his vote. Uh, so that could be an issue. People could bring that up. Yeah. Uh, some of the issues with the ambulance and the tourism bureau. You know, animosity with the chamber, but it looks like maybe the tourism bureau is turning out to be okay. I don't know. Well, so there I are a lot of yeah. different issues, mm -hmm. things that Juan has, uh, Mayor Perez has done that uh, seem to be working, and the budgets have been low. I don't know, but we've also heard uh, people haven't been all that happy with some of the things that have been going on in City Hall, and Terry alluded to that in his his press release. So there could be a lot of little issues that come up. Mm -hmm. Uh, It'll be interesting to see, because I, I know the mayor has signed a, a clean campaign pledge, and of course what that means exactly is, is open for debate, but um, uh, it'll be interesting to see if the other candidates you know, follow suit on that. And um, my sense is, I don't know, I, I just, I have, a, I have a sense that people get really contentious and cantankerous these days. I think the Supreme Court race is going to be pretty awful. And even though we're taping now in mid-January, January's kind of quiet, February it starts to rev up, but March in these nonpartisan elections, um, it's an unpleasant time. Mm -hmm. And um, I, my sense is that it, that it may well get that way. Hard to say though, hard to say. We'll watch it carefully. Yeah, I mean it also, has the city budget gone up? The budget has increased, the, the rate I has mean, gone down. The tax yeah, rate so has you gone could, down this oh, okay, year. The tax rate's gone down. So you could argue in economic times, who do you want? Yeah. Is it going to make a difference, before we move on real quick, is it going to make a difference that, you know, Representative Anakron ran for the job, and now that he's got that job kind of secure, now he feels comfortable enough, you know, dumping the job? I'm hearing a little bit of that. Do you yeah, hear I, 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 I am too. Yeah, okay. I agree It's with so you. close in time. I mean, he yeah. must have known. He could have chosen. Right, exactly. Yeah. 
There's that, that's how sitting well with some people. I don't yeah. know how big a groundswell yeah, yeah. that's going I think to be. That's a possibility. Yeah. Because there are some folks that are well aware that there's a suspicion that this was sort of choreographed, so that the, if there's going to be a very short, brief time between running for that vacant seat, should he prevail, uh, who's going to have the advantage and who's not going to have the advantage in uh, getting that that assembly seat? So we'll see. Hmm. Yeah, it, it, within it, the Democratic it, Party. It is hard to ah. know. I, I think it's such a short time frame between you win your election on November 4th. Yep. And then you mm -hmm. start circulating papers yeah. on December 1st. Oh. You know, yeah. it's, it, that, that's pretty tight. Because um, you haven't even been uh, sworn in yet, right? Uh, when do you get sw uh, sworn January? in? January? In January? Yeah. They're sworn in the first Monday in January. They're mm -hmm. already dead. But, but he took out papers for mayor before he even was sworn in. Yeah. And I mean, it's yeah. not unusual. Yeah. I mean, it's certainly not unheard of for people to have one job and, and yeah. run for another. Sure. Yeah. Um, Especially if you're not affluent. I mean, right. he, I don't yeah. think really he had any choice because yeah. mm -hmm. if he didn't run, he would be done as of the beginning of the year, and then he wouldn't have a job until. Oh, that's well, true. He may never have a job if that's he exactly. doesn't, doesn't prevail in the mayor. Right? Yeah, exactly. Well, that's true. He'd that's be true. out of work for four months. And, well. Yeah. I think it's just that vote is a little tight, you know, people who vote. Well, that's one of the reasons why they, there's always been a very strong movement to, to keep uh, these terms as two years and oftentimes courthouse positions. So yet you kind of make the people who are in those positions think twice before they do some things. Right, exactly. So they don't play games by having a long term and then be able to run for all kinds of other offices in between. Ah. Exactly, exactly. Huh. It's interesting. I mean, and of course, on the national level, if you if you lose your race for president, you still have your you know your second job. Um, but uh, in any event, um, lots of other things going on. I was very pleased to see the police and fire commission um, uh, appoint uh, uh, Tim Eirich as uh, interim chief. Um, I've known well. I got to know Tim's performance and such when I was on police and fire commission. He's a really he's a great guy. He's a classmate of mine. Is that right? Yeah. He and I went to high school together. We've known each other for a long, long time. Yeah. And he's had no occasion to arrest you for... No, he has not had an occasion <laughs> to arrest me, being the law-abiding, uh, I find standing citizen that I am. Very good. And a little bit of luck. <laughs> <laughs> and a little bit of luck. <laughs> no, Tim, and I, Tim, and I, Tim and I went to high school together, uh, and I've known... He was actually our basketball manager when I was, was, I was uh, sitting. I don't say I played basketball. I sat basketball. But um, he was, he's a great, great guy and a real, and to a certain degree was, you know, uh, he never said this, but people who observed the police department thought he was passed over from time to time for various promotions. So it was a happy ending from I, my point of view. I think so. And I don't know what the timeline is for hiring the new chief, if that's going to happen quickly or not. Um, I am... Um, I was on police and fire when, when we hired Chief Kirk, and we hired him from the inside. And he was clearly, clearly the best candidate. You know, there was just no doubt in my mind. And so I wonder if there's going to be a push to hire, you know, out of the, out of the office or, or how that, and, and you've got to hire the best person, mm -hmm. whether he's in-house or, or not. But uh, it'll be interesting to, um, to see how that works. Mm -hmm. um, the Sheboygan Press did a, an interesting um, couple of articles on the, uh, fire department's ambulance service and uh, Orange Cross, which appears to be alive and well. There's some disputes, and I think you can take figures and do whatever you want with them in some respect or, or whatever, but it appears that the ambulance is financially relatively successful and um, good service and, and such. Do you, is it all a slate of hand, or, or are we in good shape? It, it seems to me, I mean, I shouldn't say it's real, real straightforward, but you look at, and it seems to be what the city was doing was saying, how many extra people did we hire? How much equipment did we have to hire mm -hmm. if we had an ambulance service versus if we did not have an ambulance service? And you take that money, compare it to the revenue, and you should be pretty s straightforward. And I was reading some of the criticism of the number crunching, and I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't quite get the criticism. I didn't quite understand it because it was laid out to me as, you know, going in, you've got to hire a certain number of EMTs or, you know, additional staffing at your various stations, and you have to obviously buy other equipment, and you know what your costs are going in. So I wasn't, I, I, I read the, the criticism, and I read the criticism, and it's eluding me yeah. um, what exactly the, the nefariousness is <laughs> that, that people are suggesting is going on. I just, I just, somebody else needs to explain it to me, I guess. Yeah. 
Um, the city's new finance, um, head of the finance department, Terry Hansen, is pretty sharp. And so I would, I would basically trust what he comes up with. Um, I think they did add expenses. They added the cost of equipment and people, obviously. And paramedic firefighters are going to be more expensive than non-paramedic mm -hmm. firefighters. Um, but you have all this additional revenue. And so I guess it's just a question of how you, of how you attribute the revenue. And mm -hmm. they're finding, I think, like the municipal court, is that collecting these fees is not as easy as they might have thought. And uh, Medicare, as usual, is the best payor and the sure most thing. efficient payor. And uh, you know, the, the, it's a good government program, as it were. Um, but uh, um, as I said when we were talking about this long ago, um, there was a duplication of services with Orange Cross and the fire department personal experience with my dear mom and they both showed up they always sure. do sure. though or they sure. always did rather sure. and so instead of having two you know burly guys in the kitchen you had five and um, so this does seem to be a more rational allocation but um, but we'll just have to see how that goes and you know at our age you've got a lot of experience with ambulances <laughs> you know it's the nature of the beast and I've, I'll, I've not had personal well a guy was in a car accident that was not my fault, nobody was hurt, but the guys showed up and they were very, very professional and they were great. Um, people I've talked to have said that when they've, when they've arrived that they've been real happy with the way they were treated and the way mm -hmm. that the, the fellows conducted themselves. So, Well, I was real happy with Orange Cross and the fire guys. Yeah, yes, it was just, yes, uh, yes. you know, it was a lot of people mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in a fairly small kitchen. So, you know, we'll have to see how it goes. Um, signs of the time, uh, big headline of Kohler laying off lots of people. Richardson is laying off 15. Um, um, unemployment in Sheboygan County has gone from, I think it was 4.7% up to past 5% in November, and I just have to think that that's going to that that's going to continue to 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 grow. Any th thoughts on that? I mean, it just it's it it feels pretty terrible. And I think it's a spin-off of the economy that was analyzed last fall, you know, car industry going down, and now we're going to see all the part manufacturers start mm -hmm. yeah. cutting back, and we're seeing people who uh, lost their shirts for, because of Madoff or whoever else uh, they were involved with can't buy the yacht anymore, and you, know, you just can see this thing spinning around. The, the rings, that the pebble that was thrown in the, in the pool last fall are now starting to branch out, and we're going to see another six months of probably layoffs until this thing Easily. bottoms out. Yeah. yeah. And it's spread all over the country. I mean, this is what's what very, very interesting. The last couple of recessions, as short and as small as they have, and even the one in 80 was focused in mostly in the Midwest. But this is, uh, this, this is all over the country. Huh? There isn't a single state that's uh, escaping, it's international, escaping really. this. Yep. Riots in yep. Latvia and all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's really. It's. It's really an amazing. Uh, an amazing process, and and I, I, you're right. I mean, the, it just is. We are certainly an interrelated economy, to put it uh, to put it mildly. And I'm on a bunch of boards and always asking people for money. <laughs> yeah. One of those things, and I've been turned down now by two funding sources for a small project that I was trying to raise a little bit of money for, saying we're giving nothing. Yeah. Well, you know, this little family foundation is giving nothing. And I think for a lot of the nonprofits that I'm associated with, you know, that's really, yep. you know, that's you know, really pretty tough. And well, everybody's, even Harvard, even Harvard, you know, their endowments have, have just taken a tremendous yeah. pounding. Them, and so well, they're, the not average is 40 they're not in a position. I think. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, they're not in a position to do well, that. We've got staff over at the Sheboygan Area School District who had considered retiring, but mm -hmm. they're looking at their portfolios now, and they're probably not going to be retiring. And... Yeah, and uh, we're going to be facing, it's not really been public knowledge yet, but the, we're starting to get emails the last couple of days are softening the ground. Um, our school district will be looking at, for the first time, no doubt, some layoffs, unless something dramatic is done in terms of revising teachers' contracts or opening that. They have the capability, both parties, of opening the contract up and reexamining it, but well, we're going to have $1.5 million dollars, um, for the next three years each, so yeah. 4.5 million in shortfall. And when you have a school district, and mostly it's it's mostly staff and mostly employees, sure. and so if, and with some declining enrollments, and then the X factor is what's the state going to be able to do in terms of the funding formula? Yeah. Um, the governor, you know, filled a hole with the transportation budget the last time around, but it, it'll be interesting to see when he, you know, how K-12 public education is yeah. going to shake out. 
when you look at the deficits that Madison has. Mm -hmm. So you could easily see uh, numbers of teachers. A South High has been told to plan and three or four teachers uh, being laid off. And that's just one building out of several mm -hmm. dozen. So. Right. And, uh, and of course the school district is huge and that in the overall scheme of things is not much. Um, but in a, an entity where there have been no layoffs for yep. years and years and years and oh, years, yeah. and where there's been either steady growth or, or steady holding steady um, <clears throat> in terms of student population, which is where you get your money, um, I think it really, is, it really is a challenge. And we'll talk about this in our next program, but the, the possibility of the state balancing its budget um, and on the backs of whatever, I don't know. I, it seems daunting, um, yep. you know, to, to put it mildly. So um, it'll be interesting to see how all of that plays out. Um, we're just kind of rushing from topic to to <laughs> topic here. Uh, but from really bad news to good news, um, I was delighted to read about the um, Schmidt construction contribution to the Marsh Tower project. Um, the friends of the Broughton Marsh have been trying to raise money for a long time for that wonderful observation tower um, in the marsh. And, you know, I haven't really been out there very much, just kind of around the, I think it's just a wonderful, nifty resource. I was doing a little bit of re research on the, the marsh itself and the donation by Charles Broughton of, of a good portion of the land and how they had taken these canals built in these canals uh, and how they're trying to restore it more to a, a wildlife kind of kind of circumstance but I think the the marsh the tower will be very neat and give people uh, access to to a view of the of the whole area like the Parnell Tower I think to mm -hmm. to some extent um, and so congratulations to the Schmitz because apparently that was just the the funding they needed to get you know to get over the hump and um, and we'll just have to have to see where it goes from there. Um, I um, uh, as we kind of wind down here a little bit, um, we have news uh, for um, our uh, audience, our vast, huge audience. <laughs> the Donahue Group started in February of 2005. And we did that in response to um, a show that some of us had done. Were you in on that? We did a, a coverage here of the November 2004 election. And we were on the air live for about two and a half hours or so. And, and um, no offense to the guys in the booth, but we didn't have a whole lot in the way of technology <laughs> in terms of finding out what the vote totals were and, and so forth. But we had a great time. And, and this uh, program was uh, sort of born out of that. And the four of us come to this from uh, very different perspectives, I think. Um, we thought we could all sit around um, a beautiful table. And the clock is gone, but a, a beautiful set here and in a most cordial studio with wonderful people and talk about the issues of the day in a, in a um, sensible and respectful kind of way. And, and I think that we've uh, kind of accomplished that. Mm -hmm. We have decided to wrap it up after four years. And um, paraphrasing Benjamin Franklin, TV shows and, and neighbors stink after four years. <laughs> <laughs> American Idol. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, it. <laughs> Where, uh, oh, you boy. know, American Idol gets tired, and, and so does the Donahue group. So, um, so we're going to hang it up after this episode and our in our state episode. But we wanted to uh, thank all of you for kind of sticking with us. I'm just going to ask you guys to walk down memory lane, and other than the show that I personally remember, where for some reason I started to laugh hysterically. Um, we have it been- It was a good comedy show, I can't remember. Right? Yeah. It, 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 <laughs> this is an award-winning show, by the way. Um, not much of an award, <laughs> but, but we did get an, an honorable mention, and, and I've got that plaque, and, and uh, well, it's actually not a plaque. It's a nice little certificate. Retire when you're on top. To be <laughs> yeah, on top Retire when, when you're on top. Um, any thoughts that you have, just sort of goodbye thoughts? 
You know, I never Goodbye, saw that Mr. episode. Chips. I never saw that episode. Uh, did we? Did you actually show Scott? I'm looking at the control panel here. Did you actually show us uh, wow. having, or did you take a little of that out, or took a little bit of it out? Yeah, so yeah, yeah put, it, was, put in more music. Yeah, we had a little bit, <laughs> a little bit of laughter on the set, and then people started laughing and feeding off one another. No, I, I didn't get a chance to get out to the center very often, so where the studio is here, so it was always nice to kind of get out here, and I didn't really know Tom at all until we started doing the show. So it's been a pleasure getting to know Tom, and, and I knew Cal professionally a little bit here and there, but had a chance to do some things socially together, and that's been fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to miss the chair. Yeah, yeah. better than any uh, my, more chair I call we've the had Alistair before. Cook you know? chair. Yeah. <laughs> I can sit here and look like I'm doing masterpiece theater. So uh, no, it's just been it's been a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed it. Yeah, and I've appreciated getting to know uh, you, Ken, and uh, I appreciated your vision. You know, your your historical perspective on oh, the Constitution you. and everything else. And it's not. I have to correct you. It's the university. Of Wisconsin, Wisconsin College, yes. Sheboygan, not yes. the center. I <laughs> We're still I appreciate the correction. I'm, uh, I'm old school. I still think of <laughs> it. was a bill I introduced to. Was that a college? To make it a college, and yeah. uh, uh, got to know uh, Cal a lot better and his passion for campaign financing. Oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> And same with Mary Lynn. Isn't it fun when Cal just kind of <laughs> just ramps it up and just takes off? You know, yes. that was a part of Cal that I had never seen before. And and I was like, whoa, <laughs> you go. Yeah, so I, I've got, it's been, a, I've enjoyed every every moment. Uh, that's why I wore red today just to stand out. I, you know, I was considered the uh, conservative the or the whatever. The right wing ideologue. The right wing <laughs> ideologue, yeah. <laughs> so I've enjoyed it. I'm going to miss it. On the uh, there we go. There we go. So, Cal, any parting thoughts? Well, I I look forward to doing this because I had done this show. Um, I used to start it out doing a show like this in Madison. I would do every week a 15 minute show that the uh, Madison community cable would tape. They'd come to my office and I'd have the the governor in, and I'd have the state superintendent, and anybody I could drag off the street, practically, in, in the capital, we would do this. And then later on, I moved it to uh, the uh, cable vision office and uh, had my own show there, and, and then got together later on with Jim Baumgarten and did a, did a show. So this is sort of a continuation of something that I didn't want to wean myself from because I enjoy doing this type of thing. Mm -hmm. And so it's been nice. Uh, yeah renewing and as well as establishing friendships with you folks as well as keeping in touch with the issues because I do have a passion for a lot of issues and I hate to sort of go in hibernation you know and so often when you're not in put in a setting with other people with like interests you don't always get to talk about uh, these things with the, the level I guess of discourse and the depth and so it's, it's sort of like a, a, a nice discussion group here that we've had, and, and I, I like that because uh, you don't have that oftentimes uh, in any other setting. Well, farewell. Thank you so much, uh, and thanks to Scott and Carrie and Fritz and Steve. Fritz has been our built-in laugh track. We've loved that, <laughs> and, uh, and we'll see you again.